Hey, you guys, and welcome back to the 15th official episode of the Hanxious Podcast. My name is Waking Up in Vegas, Katie Murphy, and this is my co-host, Taylor Kareen. <laughs> or, uh, Taylor Murphy's funny, or Katie Murphy's really funny. Yeah, Katie Murphy and uh, Karina Swift. So... <laughs> <laughs> And because it's the 15th official episode, we are officially entering a new era. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, I'm so excited for this episode. It's been so long since I've gotten to just sit in front of the camera and speak my truth. So today's episode marks the... Q&A special where we have been asked so many questions. You guys are so supportive. You always want our advice. And so I just think today we're going to go answer some of your guys' questions. I kind of wanted to bring this up before I forget. What? So you know how like my uncle, we'll just get to it. I don't know. He's moving in with a convicted pedophile. (laughs) Wait, what? Which (laughs) uncle? The uncle who's alive. I don't know. I've got my- Why is he moving in with a convicted pedophile? Apparently you he needs a roommate. You that out? That's like insane. <laughs> I wanted to wait to tell it on the pod. But yeah, so I guess I won't be visiting him anytime soon. Ew. I know, right? And he's not that just been disgusting. convicted once. He's been convicted multiple times. He's been to jail like several times. Um. Well, Did you this... know that, that they can't watch porn? Like if you're a registered sex offender, you're not allowed to watch porn. So that's why like he got... Ever? S- Ever, and that's why he got sent to prison the second time, I guess. This apparent roommate. Ew. I know, isn't that nuts? What would you do if you couldn't watch porn? I'd probably be a happier person in the long run. I haven't watched it in a really long time, to be honest. My fucking entire... i my needs met, so <laughs> I don't need to anymore. <laughs> my entire Twitter feed, I, I mute the porn accounts. So, like, I'll have them muted, and then, like, if I just want to watch one of them, I'll just go into my following list and find the accounts from there. But I try to clean up my TL, because I don't want to be exposed to porn all day, you know? Yeah. It's very unhealthy. No, not to mention how embarrassing it is when you're in public or at work and you're like checking Twitter and then like just a huge ass is on your right. timeline, like getting fucked. Especially when I'm at the gym too and yeah. I'm like, I'll like see a random guy's like yeah. dick. And I'm like, we were so watching scared. porn at the gym that one time. <laughs> Stop, we're literally going to be registered sex <laughs> Okay, we weren't watching it to get off on it. We were just being nosy. That's what we were doing. Yeah, don't put us on a list, okay? <laughs> we weren't doing the anything weird. The was turned all the way down, <laughs> and the phone was very much guarded. Uh, so, oh my god, now I remember. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, so, yeah, it was a fat little chai. We did that on the bench press. Seat. And then I'm pretty sure we just left the gym after that. We're like, we're in <laughs> the mood to work out again. <laughs> Oh, Anyways, all um, that testosterone running through us. Ew. This one was funny. Do you ever see yourself and Sam ever being roommates? <laughs> well, Honestly, yeah, we've talked about it, but also we would need to have different, like, separate bathrooms. We cannot share a bathroom. Separate bathrooms, separate, separate rooms. bedrooms, well, soundproofed duh. walls, uh, ring camera <laughs> situated at the front door, the living room, the kitchen. <laughs> Both hallways. Yeah. Um, I feel like we could live together, but also, like, we would just need that space from each other, obviously. Because me and Sam, like, we do spend a lot of time together, but I feel like... It's nice to come home. (laughs) Yeah, it's nice to (laughs) say goodbye when he leaves, tell him drive safe. And also, me and Sam don't fight a lot anymore. We used to, like, a few years ago all the time, but... When we do fight, it's disgusting. So I wouldn't want to live together and then get into an argument like how we have. I think we could live together if Karina's in counseling. <laughs> I think that would be a great plan. But until the day comes. Who are you glad you met the past year? Have I met anyone new? I'm glad I got to meet all of my new coworkers at work at my serving I'm job. glad I got to meet Chloe Shippy. Oh, yeah, Chloe. I love Chloe Shippy. Yes, my favorite Chloe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's multiple in our lives. Chloe <laughs> Shippy's my favorite Chloe too. Yeah. I will put that out there. She's the most shout supportive. out Miss Shippy. Yes, we she's love- a teacher. We love her. Miss Shiphead, <laughs> <laughs> you little ship. <laughs> she's gonna love that. I love Chloe. Yeah, no, we love Chloe. Do you believe in God? I do, but I don't like 
categorize myself with the religion. One of our friends smoked a perk and died and was in hell and then got forced back into his body. So that really freaked me out. Who the fuck was that? Our friend that won the half million dollar jackpot. He went to hell? Yes. Not surprised. But <laughs> <laughs> Not surprised either. <laughs> that when he, him no, in hell. No. He said when he so he, let's tell the story about Aiden Mac. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't watch. He's probably drunk somewhere. <laughs> Aiden's nice to me. I okay. love Aiden too, but I'm not going to say I'm shocked. Also, I am Team Alyssa. So yeah. let's not get it twisted. Team ex girlfriend alert. Yes. But anyways, tell the quick story because this is the Vegas episode. We're going to get okay. into all the details about what so we did in Vegas. Basically, it was like four years ago. I remember because I was hanging out with his ex girlfriend. All I know is that he smoked a perk. She went to go do laundry. She came back and he was on the floor and blew and like couldn't breathe. And then they had to call like 911. And then he said that he, I'm pretty sure he was like, I could see everyone. Like I, it was like I was watching myself and I saw myself like dead with the paramedics. And I could see everyone panicking. And I was just in a black, cold room, like pitch black and could just see myself. And he said he felt something demonic behind him, but refused to look back. And then he said that the paramedics, they Narcaned him twice mm -hmm. and it wasn't working. And one of the paramedics was like, let's do it a third time. And the other one was like, are you sure it's not working? And he did it. And that's when Aiden got shoved back into his body. Oh, my God. That's so yeah. scary. That's giving me like anxiety. Yeah. And so after that, I was like, hmm. I'm team God. <laughs> I'm not trying to get fucked <laughs> up like that. <laughs> Oh Ew, my god, it's so demonic insidious. stuff scares me. Yeah, that like freaked me out just now. Because, yeah. I mean, I definitely could picture myself having a demon looking behind me. Don't turn around. Yeah. Um, no, you didn't tell the story, though, about... So our friend Aiden, he actually won half oh. a million dollars when he yeah. was... The first time he went gambling after I'm, he turned 21. Yeah, he, basically the story of that was... He walked into a casino. It was his 21st birthday. He walked into a casino and then I guess there was like a guy playing on a slot machine. He, the guy was there for like hours or something. He got fucking pissed and like hit the machine and got up and Aiden was like, that's a good sign. Aiden literally sat down, put money in and then did it. And he won the jackpot the first time. I can't even imagine. And he said he feeling. literally, by the time he looked up from it, security was already surrounding him to like protect him. <laughs> to protect him? Yeah. More like to protect everyone else. Yeah, Aiden's When the worst person you know wins the jackpot. No, do you remember? <laughs> Aiden, if you're watching, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, do you remember? Um, it was December 2020. We were all at Champs. We were with Fern, too, and Leo. Mm -hmm. and Fern. <laughs> We love Fern. We do love that her. little bush, <laughs> <laughs> little shrub. <laughs> um, yeah. we all like Ubered from. It was Aiden's birthday because every year on his birthday he gets like his yearly money from winning that, and so he. Really, oh yeah, because he gets like an allowance from it. He didn't get all of it at once. They like divvied it up, so every year he gets for tax like, purposes. Yeah, so every single year he gets a certain amount of money. Isn't it like twenty thousand dollars or something? I think so. It's fucking crazy. I know. It's literally so, 20 paychecks. Just know in December, Aiden is literally spiraling. <laughs> like from December to like March are like dark times for him. But we were with him out at Champs. Which is so ironic because you would think when you come into that much money, it would be mm -hmm. a blessing. Like anyone watching would be like, I would kill to get $20,000 every year. But instead, it's mm -hmm. like the worst time in his life. Yeah. And so we were, doing just we, were drinking. At, we were at Champs and then he was like, let's go to a casino. We Uber to a casino. I'm not kidding. He pulls out like $6,000. He has me hold some of his stuff for him. He comes back up not even 10 minutes later. He's like, give me my card. I need to pull out more money. And I was like, Aiden. And he was like, I just lost all of it, but I need to win it back. Like he has a gambling problem, obviously. <laughs> but wouldn't you, after winning all that money, you'd be kind of chasing a high. But I feel like with me, I'd be like, I already got what I, what was given to me. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, if you were coming into that type of money, we would just see you wearing some very expensive outfits. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we'd be like, oh, here she goes. Within like five years. <laughs> You'd be shirt poor. <laughs> like people say they're house poor. No, just your I designer would, I... poor. <laughs> New Louis Vuitton boots. <laughs> anyway, I can't I know, pay my mom I rent. I get like that with my money. I love designer things. I know. I'm everybody sorry, I have does. I a passion for fashion. What was your favorite moment of 
2023 so far. I think my number one moment of 2023 was actually just last week finding out that I am the ranked number one <laughs> server at my movie theater job. And I found that out yesterday. Oh, yeah. I saw that in the group chat. Congratulations. Thank you. So to all my naysayers who think I have poor work ethic, fuck you. <laughs> and that includes all my coworkers. Because you know what? I did it. Does I beat Karen all know? of you. Yes, my lesbian coworker did find out, and she I was very proud of me. I love Karen. Ugh, Karen's a queen. Worst thing you have ever done. Uh, I have a few. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't even think of, like, the absolute worst. I mean, I'll keep it 100. I guess maybe, like, just me chronically cheating on my first and only relationship was probably not the I best. I like you've done worse than that. <laughs> oh, I didn't have to go there. You've a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, maybe cheating on him on Valentine's Day that's kind of fucked up I told my ex-boyfriend I was going to beat up his little sister <laughs> <laughs> I said your sister's a dumb bitch I'm going to beat her ass I've always gone for the jugular give I me know. the phone because I have that actually goes into this next question yeah this question do y'all care if your significant other's family like you so yeah I do yeah I do too because my last two mm, I just don't know how to three. behave the last three relationships I had, first of all, I've never been in a relationship with a guy who has a father present in their life. Like, we'll start there. Um, the moms always end up hating me. But I honestly think they hate me because they just enable their son's shitty behavior. Like my most recent ex, mm -hmm. me and his mom used to be really close until I found out he was cheating on me with his ex-girlfriend. And then when I found out, I texted her and I said, so no one was going to tell me he was still seeing her, which I don't know why I texted her thinking that... She was going to be like, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but uh. I've gone off on her multiple times and she just, she's just a liar like him. So I Apple do, I do want to like with whoever I end up marrying, like I do want to have a good relationship with their family. And I also want my family to like who I'm with because my last two boyfriends, no one liked. So yeah, I, my yeah. boyfriend's family, um, <laughs> They didn't like me very much. Yeah, they didn't. Well, didn't Some your ex-boyfriend's brother break your phone? Uh, smashed it to bits. <laughs> so I had to get a new one. And, and in terms of, I remember the first time, I, my first and only time, I had Christmas with his family. Um, no, one got, no one got me a gift. So that was really nice. I that That's really uncomfortable. Thought I'd be welcomed into the family with open arms, but it just they didn't. They didn't get you a gift? No. They did not. So I had to sit that's there and really, suffer. That's actually so fucked up. Were you like crying on the inside? I was literally like, I fucking hate your family. Yeah, so yeah I would hate them too. That's literally giving when Noah's mom didn't wish me a happy birthday and then four days later wish Kelsey a happy birthday. Right. I just think it's I, just like a huge slap in the face. I didn't feel so very rude. wanted. And he was very close yeah. with his siblings. And his mm -hmm. siblings, the first time I hung out with them, his little sister told him and i don't know why he told me this but she told him yeah i like him he just talks a lot little did you know bitch that i was gonna have a podcast <laughs> one day <laughs> so i took my talking skills and put them to good use so and for what because i asked you about how you were, you were doing in school sorry i'm a teacher and you're gonna treat me like that <laughs> Like, oh my so god! So fucked up, dude. It's like horrible when the siblings start getting involved. It's like shut the fuck up. Yeah. Go eat your fucking peas and carrots, bitch. <laughs> Let the adults have their fucking <laughs> issue. But also at the same time, like, okay, let's do the math. I was heavily addicted to Adderall. I was an alcoholic, and I was unemployed, living with his family, free of charge. Like. <laughs> maybe the reasons they didn't like me were valid. I just, at the time, felt very attacked. Well, we already said the paintball story, but Sam did also shoot the brother with paintball <laughs> after the game was already <laughs> over. Right in the noggin, and I do it again, too, if I was given the choice. Dude, I've never been, like, in person beefing like that. It's always, like, they're not around, and I'll, like, have my comments. One time we played Mario Party together as a family, and... They all got mad at me because I apparently, I stole a star from his older brother, the brother who's broken my phone. Him and I were actually very similar in age, and I think there was a weird competitive nature yeah. vibe. He got, like, really pissed at me because I bought the star from him. Like, I stole it from him. Oh. I know the feeling. You were doing it to me at Zoe's, and it was <laughs> pissed. Okay, when we but went I to California earlier in the something. month. 
we literally were playing Mario Party on the Switch. They were all fucking bullying me because, first of all, I sucked at it. And then second of all, they would ironically steal from me, even though I was in last place. Like, I didn't have a chance to win to begin with. Like, fuck you. <laughs> You're no, kind of I'm team his brother on that. Fuck you. That's so annoying. Look, I'm team his brother too in a lot of ways. I just wish he gave me a new phone or just sent me a couple hundred for it, okay? And in his defense, apparently they thought I was cheating on his brother and that's why they smashed my phone to bits. But in my defense, I wasn't cheating on him until my fucking phone got smashed. <laughs> and then I cheated on him. I was like, and I'm fucking someone else. <laughs> And in my defense, I did actually fuck him. I just, we just made out and cuddled naked. But in my defense, Sam, I did what I had to do to survive. I mean, I've been there, so. Hey, yeah, <laughs> Sam. I can't even like say how many times I I cheated in my last relationship, but it was always cheating back. So don't get it twisted. Yeah, I can't say much of the same. He'd like a picture, and I'd send a nude. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, okay, you like that guy, Sophie? I'm gonna. I do not wreck your like. Life taking nudes or sending them at all anymore it's like so burnt out well yeah you do it about every 20 hours i'd be burnt out too you probably run out of underwear (laughs) well i guess you don't have to wear underwear when you're sending your pussy (sighs) i'm like can you shut up i'm like less laundry picks more business at (laughs) shots have y'all ever had a creepy date interaction no, but I have gone on dates with my ex-boyfriends and they'll scream at me in public because we'll be fighting. It's really Yay. embarrassing. So I guess that's creepy. One time me and Keelan were at Kane's and we were fighting. I remember there was like a group of guys sitting behind us and they kept staring at us. And I could tell they felt bad for me because of how fucking mean he was being to me. Mm-hmm. He was screaming at me and like literally on the verge of making me cry. And he literally was like, I'm going to fucking leave. And it was before we even got our food. And then he was like trying to leave. And I was like, I want to hit you so bad. Like you have no (laughs) idea, but I want to fuck you up right now. Oh my God. You're reminding me actually. So I'll tell the phone broken story. So basically I go to a Lady Gaga rave. I wish I I went to that. We were basically on the rocks at this point. Like, Yeah, this was like towards the end of their relationship for sure. Definitely. Just a bullet train headed towards a wall. Was this before rehab? This was after post reap. Really? Yeah, yeah. So the oh Lady God, Gaga rave. This was I was still drinking excessively at this point. Mm. And That's right, because one of our ex friends got Sam to relapse on alcohol. So she didn't get me to relapse. None of us agreed to it. I literally was telling you, I'm not drinking with you. Yeah, I know, but you guys were still going out and drinking without me. So I felt left out. I'll delve into it. Mm. So I get out of rehab. Once I got out of rehab for the first time, I went straight into PHP, which is basically like you sit in a building for fucking six hours a day. It's like going to school. So you sit there for six hours a day, five days a week. And then from PHP, after a month of that, you graduate. And then you step down to IOP, which is like three times a week for only three hours. So when I got moved down to IOP, I had been sober from everything for at least two and a half months. And then I finally just hit a point when I was in IOP where I was like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to go back to... Adderall, but it was still gone a little bit up in the air. Like the first few months of my sobriety was really rough. And I think I was kind of constantly second guessing if I was going to stay sober or not. But because my experience before rehab was so traumatic for me, I just was really afraid to go back to anything stimulating. But Mm -hmm. I still thought alcohol might be a okay because I wasn't on Adderall anymore. So I was like, you know what, maybe I can drink like a normal person, which is a lie every addict tells themselves. So then I decide to go to a drag queen performance for the first time with my former friend. We get there Mm -hmm. and there's this guy there who's not he's cute but i also i didn't feel very good about myself like i was when i got a rehab let's just say mama was tipping the scales a little (laughs) one of my heavier moments so i just wasn't feeling great about myself my hair was still recovering from the 50 times i shaved it and became bald so my hair was still growing it i just didn't look my absolute best okay so I go to this drag yeah. queen performance. It's nine o'clock. It's in the middle of butt fuck nowhere. Okay. It's like a fucking desert. There's a there's dust flowing. And I decide in this moment, as I'm sitting here amongst the drag queens, that I think I could go for a drink. But me being an addict, I decided it was a wise idea to 
by nine shots at once. I love how going into this, I was like, I'm he not always... going to drink like that anymore because I'm not an Adderall. Meanwhile, my first purchase as a relapser is to buy nine straight shots of vodka with no taste. And he's done that before multiple times at bars. It never ends well. So yeah. I buy the nine shots but to it's my also friends. Like, my friend is yeah. being like, please don't do it. Please don't do it. And I'm like, oh, just shut up. I'm going to do it. No one's going to blame you. Meanwhile, everyone blames her, but it's not her fault. It was my fault. Mm. I'm the one who chose to drink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I buy the alcohol. I sit down and I start throwing back the shots. And then what do you know? My goggles come on. Okay. And me and my boyfriend at this point, we had just kind of gotten back together because when I was in rehab, we were broken up. But like we talked on the phone all the time. It was yeah, weird. he wouldn't call any of us, but his mom and him. I was trying to win him back. But you know what? He fucked somebody else while I was in rehab. Okay, so. I just want to add this. Sam's ex and my most recent ex, they have the same birthday. July 31st, the day that will move, live on in infamy. It's not the 31st. It's, oh. the thir it's July 30th. <laughs> you're such a piece of shit. Can you tell I'm a terrible boyfriend? I've never known his birthday. It's July 30th. <laughs> I literally Leo's. have to use. To, I hate Leo. Man. I literally used to have to ask Karina, "When's his birthday?" Because I his literally own couldn't boyfriend. remember it. <laughs> I'm a really good with birthdays. So listen, when so. I was in rehab, I thought we were working on things. I was very obsessed with them at this point because it was the mm -hmm. darkest, most depressing time in my life. I loved rehab, to be honest. Looking back, it was like going to Girl Scout camp, but it also was a really Scout. lonely mm -hmm. time in my life, and I really wanted to be back in a relationship with him. I was seeking a sense of normalcy because I had just given up Adderall, something that was. Truly, my first love who had been with me for years. And so that yeah. breakup was really hard. So I needed some love and cuddling and sex. And I wanted it from my boyfriend because I also didn't feel very good about myself. So when I got out of rehab, I didn't think I would ever honestly be able to get into a new relationship. So I, I try to make things work with him. So the whole month of June, it's I'm fresh out of rehab. I'm going to PHP every day. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And I'm staying completely sober. And he would spend the weekends with me. But then... I come to find out he ended up he had had sex with somebody while we were in rehab which really threw me for a loop but then i was like you know what well whatever we'll move past this and then i guess we kind of became official again after about a month but then he really pissed me off because the night that i relapsed on alcohol was because it was the first weekend that he wasn't going to spend with me he wanted to go drink somewhere else and i think that really pissed me off because i was like you're really going to leave me all alone by myself on the weekend i don't have a car at this point i don't have a job i don't really have any mm -hmm. friends i hang out with and you're going and partying and i'm not allowed to and i think that was why i made the decision to relapse and drink again. i would have too but not saying it's his fault either you know that was my responsibility to not drink again but honestly we'll get to it so I drank my nine shots. There's this guy there who's pretty cute, you know, and one thing leads to another. He leaves about 500 hickeys on my neck. We hook up for like the whole night. And the next day I wasn't thinking straight at all because I'm honestly a garbage cheater. <laughs> like I don't know how to cover my tracks. I don't know how to lie correctly. I don't delete things off my phone. I'm awful at it because I think low key I want to get caught. So I have all these fucking hickeys on my neck and I just put a bunch of makeup on it because I'm like, this will cover it. It was not covering it. And he came over, he sees the hickeys and then chaos ensues. He yells at me, does the whole thing. But then we try to make it work and then like another month and a half goes by and then I'm still kind of, I think I took a break from drinking again, but then we went to this Lady Gaga rave where I decided I wanted to drink again. He comes with us and honestly, me and my ex-boyfriend, we could not get along in public to save our life. Like you said, <laughs> like constant fighting. We yeah. would more often than not never make it past the parking lot of where we were supposed to yeah. go to because we'd just be fucking arguing for that's hours how, that's how it was with keelan horrible Me and him would fight really fucking bad so i'm not drunk i be buy like a beer and i end up losing him in the crowd but he thinks because i'm gone and because we're at a lady gaga rave and there's a bunch of gay guys he just assumes i'm like hooking up with somebody in the stall so when he finally Which finds me, I would think the same after what you just did. But also, so. I like I'm not like that. OK, I don't just go up sex in public like that's not my thing. I wouldn't have been able to. <laughs> I didn't feel good about the way I looked at all. Yeah. So I definitely knew like I wouldn't be pursuing anybody. Mm -hmm. He finally locates me and he gets in my face and he's yelling at me and security like thinks he's being really aggressive. So they kick him out. But his <gasps> phone died. So he's fucking so when the security's him. escorting him out, he takes my phone with him. And then that starts a whole fight with all my friends yelling at him because they're like, give him his phone back. And he sprints down the street and he disappears into the fucking pits of downtown Phoenix. 
And then I'm like, okay, well, you fucking scream at me, basically traumatize me because I'm feeling so fucking like verbally abused right now. And I mm -hmm. haven't been doing anything bad. I've been on my best behavior. So I end up going to a party with my friends and I don't have a phone at this point because he fucking stole it from me. <laughs> and at this party, I'd be pissed. I do end up hooking up with the same guy, but we didn't really hook up. We just were making out. And then um, when I got back home early in the morning, he had deleted all of my gaming profiles off of my favorite video games. Things <laughs> that take a very long time to earn, okay? So I was already like, and then he's like chasing like me around. Invited. He's like chasing me around. He like tries to like get on top of me to hurt me. And so I'm screaming at him to stop. I like have a screwdriver. I'm ready to stab him with it. Mm -hmm. Just a whole fucking mess. And then he gets on my phone. And he starts arguing with my friends. Oh, my God. Was this when we were we were like talking shit about him in the group chat? Then all of a sudden from no, Sam, there was one. voice Different memos one. from Different his time. ex. It was so scary. Oh, was this when he started texting off of your laptop? Yes. Oh, my God. So yeah. I was just ultimately like fucked and it was so bad and after that mind moment you, none of us were really that close with sam anymore at this point because he was so wrapped up in his relationship and just trying to stay so, sober yeah so it was like i don't know so just a really weird time in like all of our lives and i was honest. struggling already a lot with my anxiety problems but mm -hmm. after that night i just remember weeks went by where i couldn't even leave my house i felt so like agoraphobic my anxiety was at an all-time high and I was constantly dissociating, constantly not knowing what to do. And then we finally, I finally got up the courage as hard as it was, even though he still fucking lives with me, so it's not like much changed. But I did finally tell him, like, I don't think we should probably date. Yeah. And I know he feels the ex same exact way. Yeah, you can tell he does. Yeah, definitely probably not more than mean. I do. Not to be mean, but... but yeah, well, Just saying it how it is. We could only be so lucky to have someone with better boundaries because, at least in my situation, my ex boyfriend <laughs> wants nothing to do with me, um, which is something you always said you wished you had, but we know you deep down don't. So, to really take the knife into my side is really nice of you because you know how bad that bothers me. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> you know damn well if Noah was not. Still currently trying to get back with you. You'd be he hasn't called pissed. me after I after I told him to stop. How long's that been? The day we were leaving Vegas. Basically, okay, me and Noah, like we are actually done, and we've been done since that last episode we posted. But every fucking day after I broke up with him, he will call me in the morning like it's clockwork. Off Star Six Seven because I haven't blocked, and then sometimes he would call me like on his lunch. I wouldn't answer. Sometimes you call me like in the middle of the night, wouldn't answer. There's a few times where I would answer and I'd just be like, hello. And then he'd be like, the fuck am I still blocked? It's been two weeks. And I would the just- dog, The dog's door. I wonder why. Whoa, Captain Obvious. I just told him, I was like, dude, we're done. Like, we're done for good this time. And he was like, so we're actually done. And I went, yeah, we are. And then I kept being like, go have fun with Kelsey, his ex. I'm convinced they're still talking, which it's none of my business. I really don't care. They can have fun with each other. I just don't understand why she would even want to talk to him. But that's none of my business. That's her issue. So she yeah. can have fun Pen. with that. Yeah, nugget. <laughs> Inside joke. His pet nicknames for her were really rancid. Yeah. <laughs> Chicken nugget. Like, why would you call your girlfriend nugget and pen? I want to know the fucking story about pen. Like, what the fuck is that? Maybe she put a pen up her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure her boyfriend watches these. <laughs> hey, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. I love uh, Cody. <laughs> I don't know him, but he, yeah. Um, Woo! Anyways, but I keep telling him, like, go be with Kelsey. Like, go. that's what you wanted this whole time. Yeah, you guys so. could see the types of notes app shit he would text his ex-girlfriend while they were dating. You'd vomit on yourself. Yeah, and then every time I'd fucking see it, he'd threaten to kill himself. And I'd... Please tell the story. What did you mean when you texted the other day that he tried to hang himself in the club? <laughs> Dude, okay. Okay, so last week's episode... I was talking about when I rolled his arm up in a window. It was <laughs> the same week. I'm not kidding. I oh went my through God, his phone. Quite the calendar I here. went through. I went through his phone and I found this 
it was a text to Kelsey, but it's one of those texts where it was so long. It has an like arrow, and it. then you have to open it in the notes app. Oh, God. So already my anxiety is like at an all time high. And I'm reading it, and in the message, he's like, I'm not with Karina as I'm asleep next to him, and we probably had sex, like, the night before, and he would, like, cry and say that he was changing. It's there, Karina! <laughs> <laughs> One time we were fighting so bad, he threw up, like, in front of me, and I was like, then stop cheating. Anyways, um... <laughs> <laughs> he was like standing he like started puking it was like this and I was like I don't feel bad he like, just shoved me why would I feel bad that you're throwing up in front of me right now anyways so he literally I went through his phone and I just saw it and it was this long message and it starts off with it's been a year since we've broken up oh my god and like it's just like, I don't know if you're done with me or whatever. And then f I think in the note, he was writing about how he was pissed off at her, but still loves her and will always love her. He, and that started, he's off being like, me. he started off being like, I hate you so much, but I still love you. Like, oh, love yeah. Her. And so I'm going through it. And every time I go through his phone, I would obviously wake him up by throwing it at him. And I'd be like, get the fuck up. And I'd be like, hey, what the fucking softball player? <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> And I throw hard. I don't fat. doubt it. I throw hard and fucking far too. But yeah, like, you guys should hear about her cousin, <laughs> the guy who fucking punched someone and killed him with one punch. That's what you're fucking with. I mean, maybe not when you were 15. <laughs> maybe Getting not when Jill beat me up. But anyways, <laughs> um, so I like wake him up and I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I was like, I thought like things were gonna be different. Like you said, you were done talking to her too. And then he was just like. I don't know why I wrote that. No, I blacked out. <laughs> like, I was just, I was just, it's always, I was mad at you. And then um, <laughs> I was like, I also had work. Like, I was opening that day and it was probably like an hour before I shipped. And I was like, I was like, I don't fucking care. Like, I'm leaving. I'm so over this fucking relationship. And then next thing you know, he grabs a belt and then runs into the closet and slams the door. And then I'm crying. <laughs> I'm pounding on the door. I'm like, please just stop. 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 Why are you doing this right now? Great. He's like six foot three. He's probably standing on his tippy toe. <laughs> yeah, kid, get the cap off. <laughs> No, and it was so, and I'm not being insensitive to people who uh, have killed bitch. themselves I'm... and have attempted. Like, I'm not being insensitive. He's just such a performer. Like, literally, welcome was, to the circus. The amount of times he's said, like, that he was, it's just insane. He would always threaten to kill himself. And then he did that in front of me, and it was like a huge deal. I was crying. I had to call my manager and be like, my boyfriend's trying to kill himself. Like, <laughs> or no, I don't think I said it over the phone. I was just like, I'm having like a lot of issues right now. Like I'll be in, but like, I'm just going to be a little bit late. Mind you, my attendance was so horrible at Dillard's. When I got in to make my day even worse, I'd have a fucking meeting with all of management <laughs> upstairs in the office. And I would sit there and tell them, well, my boyfriend tried to kill himself this morning. And then they still didn't really care because I literally <laughs> was late and absent all the time. Like, and okay, it was just girl who cried wolf. How many times does this happen? And then mind you that same day, Noah ends up sending me a long text. Oh, that also had to be God. open to the notes app, but Kelsey's was longer than the one he sent me. And I compared it obviously. And I was pissed. <laughs> uh, you didn't meet the word count for this assignment. Yeah, so it was just back. so like, I guess Kelsey was just the one that got away from him, which whatever, that's fine. But like, I don't think you should, be in another relationship with someone and destroy their self-esteem and their life the entire right. time they're with you when you know you're not over your ex-girlfriend. Clearly. I think it's just fucked up. Yeah, fucking is. But now you're the one who got away. Yeah, which I don't even care. I just want him to leave me the fuck alone. Got away with murder. Sam called me earlier today and was like, have you like been listening to like the Chris Watts situation? Like that guy that murdered his girlfriend and his family. And he was like, it sounds a lot like Noah. And then he was explaining the situation to me and literally like that could have literally happened to me. Yeah, he's literally Chris Twat, like genuinely. Yeah, so Such I just, I don't know. I honestly might just get a restraining order to be honest, because <laughs> oh, I don't bitch, feel safe. You could. Yeah, I know. That fucking list of evidence would be five pages long, genuinely. I know. You guys should see your ick list form. It was like 135. Yeah, okay, so. I was like, Mind um, you, I started an ick list towards him, I think in December or November, because he just, 
it was getting bad to the point where like even his voice was just pissing me off like anytime he'd be really loud and screaming like to try and be funny i'd be like in the inside i'd be like shut the fuck up like you're so (laughs) annoying i hate you shut up my ick list i'm not kidding he's like yeah <laughs> oh my god, he looks so good! <laughs> Anyways, the ick list was like almost to 200 by the time I almost broke up with him, and I didn't have it for that long. Every and it's so fucked up because he has no idea that I was doing that. But I would be. Can with we him. read some of the I'd be with him. I would be with him, and he'd do something annoying. And I'd be making eye contact with him, and I'd. I don't remember just be typing exactly what I'd be typing exactly what he was doing in my notes and I'd be like, he's so fucking annoying. <laughs> Can you please read yeah. the ick list? Okay, it's at 137. Oh, okay. I mean, I think after the first 20, I'd be like, maybe there's a problem in this relationship. Can I read them? I think maybe I should Yeah, you them. can read them. <laughs> okay. The title of today's novel is This is like our, our audiobook. <laughs> Things Noah does. <laughs> Insert <laughs> bleh emoji. <laughs> Called me annoying and a dumb bitch when I asked about New Mexico. Oh, when he traveled to New Mexico to, to hook up with either gender. We're still, don't know. <laughs> okay, stop. Nine, doesn't make love, only fucks me. <laughs> Ten, he's obnoxious. <laughs> 11, he gaslights me. 12, he'll mumble something under his breath, then say he didn't say anything when I ask because he's insulting me. I'm not kidding. Oh my God, he that's literally, literally shit. Mumble. Like, that's the shit Mackenzie's mom and my mom does. He's yes. literally a woman. Yes, no, he would literally be behind me and call me a whore. And I'd be like, what did you say? He'd be like, nothing. And that was before me and him would start actually fighting, like before our relationship was bad. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. He's 16, doesn't tell anyone we're in a relationship. Oh, I'm 17. We're on 17, mind you. Tells girls I'm crazy and that he has an active restraining order on <laughs> Which me. Which was a lie. 18, guilt trips me. 19, makes me feel like he is my responsibility. Yes, I fucking hate that shit. If his mom wasn't responding to his text, he would text me in a bad mood and like expect me to do whatever she wasn't doing. Like whether it was like ordering him food Karina, or sending him money. Karina, rub my feet. Karina, braid my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stand it. That shit is so annoying. 21, has FaceTimed multiple girls the past four years, probably in the same room as you as yeah. you're sleeping. 22, will sleep in opposite directions from me, like with yeah. his back turned or his feet no, on the bed. <laughs> Like, like my head fucking was having a sleepover. My, dad, my my fucking head was right here, and his would be on the other end. I wake up pissed as fuck. Huh? I wonder why he was doing that. Yeah, because he was cheating. Twenty three makes me feel invalid. Twenty four makes me an angry person. <laughs> Twenty five called me fat behind my back to his family, friends, and mistresses. <laughs> The fact that I called them mistresses. 26. Was mean to me after I got my abortion. 27. Manipulated me and said he wanted a baby until I actually got pregnant. Then his reaction was, we can't keep it. 28. Was seeing his ex-girlfriend, Kelsey, behind my back while I was at work. 29. Made all of his friends hate me based off of lies. 30. Never on his phone in front of me. 31. Will not let me near his phone if it's unlocked. 32. Oh, this was no, a lovely don't, one. No, don't, don't, Okay, takes his dogs on long walks with his <laughs> fist. 33. Is the worst dog owner I've ever known in my entire life. Yep. 34. Sent Jordan masturbating videos. Mm-hmm. Oh, did he borrow your dildo for that one? <laughs> 35. <laughs> sent Alexis nudes. I took of him. Yes, he was sending dick pictures that I fucking took. I've it's- probably done that. 36, <laughs> subscribe to all of my friends' only vans. Uh, 37, was trying to fight. <laughs> blank, blank, and blanks. Leaked, leaked photos on, on Reddit. Reddit. 40, easily gets angered. 41, makes me feel bad about a fake body count when we were just starting to hang out. Sam got mine and Philomena's mixed up. <laughs> that was uh- so <laughs> annoying. Basically, the one of the few times we hung out together in the beginning of their relationship, he asked me what Karina's body Which count was. Which is fucking weird. Why do you care? 
Oh my God. And me trying to get brownie points with the new boyfriend thought it was funny to tell him the truth, but I got but it the wasn't numbers the mixed truth. up. So I ended up telling him a it was much. 60. I told him a larger body count than what was true. So I got like a whole fight between them. It did, but in your defense, you didn't think he would react that way. No, I he thought he immediate- knew who I'm you not were. Kidding. He literally, Sam answered it and I got pissed off and I was like, that's not true. Noah was sitting right next to me on the couch. He got up and stood up. Like, just wouldn't sit next to me. I'm going to be sick. (laughs) It's not 60. Like, it still even isn't. So he can literally go choke. Yeah. Obviously, it's 15. (laughs) Doey. I'm literally, it's like five. (laughs) (laughs) hundred. Anyways. 45 didn't get me a birthday card. 49. This one's kind of weird. What? Um, doesn't turn off dog biting videos even after I said it's giving me PTSD. No, he would put on videos of people getting attacked by pit bulls. And I'd be like, dude, you need like it. I As can't if even, you weren't literally mauled by his. Like I literally can't with those videos. And he and I would say, can you please turn it off? And he wouldn't. So I think I wrote that literally as he was doing it. That was like one of the times where I was like, I fuck. <laughs> 51 said, I provoke him to cheat on me. Literally the words that have left my mouth. with My boyfriend, <laughs> you provoke me. <laughs> 52 called me the R word. 53 called me a bird. 50, <laughs> a bird? Like, like, like a, a, like a, <laughs> Like the slur, you not the are slur, a bird. but <laughs> I know I am, but you don't have to bird. fucking say it. 54 said, I do nothing for him. I isn't grateful for things I have done. Oh, you must have been mad when you wrote that one. Typo. I isn't grateful. <laughs> 55 screams at me while I'm working. Sounds like your mom. 56 <laughs> tells me a few hours before his work Christmas party that he's going. Caused a huge fight because you weren't invited to that one. Well, I couldn't go because you fucked his coworker. <laughs> She got banned from the Christmas parties. Uh, It was deserved. Okay. (laughs) It was very much deserved. 61. Blames everything on the J-Rob situation. Coworker in question. (laughs) 62. Texted Kylie Moody when we first started dating. Who the fuck's Kylie Moody? This girl used to fuck like before we dated. Is she Moody? She's, I like her. She's really nice. Okay. We're mutuals. Good for you, Kylie Moody. We'll name we'll change your name to Kylie. Has a good time. Uh, 63 isn't welcoming when he picks me up. 64 doesn't kiss yeah. me or tell me he's happy to see me when he picks me up. 65 isn't affectionate. 66 he's annoying and obnoxious. <laughs> I had to write that twice in there. That's probably in his zip list, to be honest. <laughs> no. You probably both said you're no, annoying. No, honestly, he literally asked me. He was like. Have I ever given you the ick? And I just looked at him and I went, yeah. (laughs) And I was like, don't act like I haven't given you the fucking ick. I'm sure I do all the time. 68. Thinks he's a god because of his graffiti. And then in parentheses, get a career. (laughs) (laughs) 69 has made me pay for almost everything the last two weekends. In parentheses, wonder why. (laughs) Refer back to number 68. Get a career. (laughs) Uh, 70. A very negative person and doesn't actively try to seek happiness. No. That would fucking drive me insane. 71. Has an annoying voice. God, Karina. (laughs) Karina. 72. Took videos of me high off of a Suboxone and was sending it to his friends and laughing. How the fuck did you get a Suboxone? (laughs) What were you doing? I was on Suboxone when I got my tattoo. That's why I didn't feel anything. Oh, my yeah. God. I still don't know what getting a tattoo feels like. It. Because I was high. It feels like your cat when it scratches me. That's how it feels. Mm. 73. Took pictures on FaceTime while I've been freaking out and crying over him lying. He screenshots photos of you. Yeah. Like, I would be screen. Yeah. <laughs> And he'd take live photos of them. Isn't that mean? That is mean, but kind but of It's funny. funny, but it's mean. It's so mean. It's so mean. Uh, 74. Wouldn't delete unflattering naked pictures of me off his phone until I did it myself. When were those happening? Like, he'd just randomly snap a photo of you while you're, like, nude? No, it would be, like, while we're having sex and the angles just weren't good. And I would freak out. <laughs> I have an eating disorder. Like, that. I don't want that. No, I get it. Oh my god! No, trust me. Me, my boyfriend. When I first started dating him, and he would try to take videos of me, I would get in such a bad. I'd be like in the middle of giving him ad, and he he turned his phone to show me what I looked like, and I'd be like, "All right, we're done." (laughs) Yeah. Give me the phone. I can't believe I look like that. Like now, especially bitch, when he would do it from the side, and I'd see my profile, and it'd be like fucking toad, like (laughs) swallowing a fly. Like your stomach from the side. Right. Like I don't want to see that. (laughs) The hamburglar's giving him head. (laughs) 
Stop. 75. Always says he wants to kill himself and never actually does it. <laughs> Did I say that? No, I did. Oh, I was like, geez. You said, and makes it seem like it's my fault. 76. Told me he basically would rather kill himself than be in an argument and hear me, bitch. 77. This one's in all caps. <laughs> Call me fat, which triggers me. I know I already said that, but it's tattooed in my brain. I, oh, how poetic. I think about it every single fucking day multiple times. 78. Threesome rumors. <laughs> that oh. he's had a threesome? Yeah, that's when Talia had the fake account and said she fucked him with her friend. But oh, it wasn't okay. true. All right, we've crossed that one but off. But I wouldn't be surprised if he actually 79, did got mad at me for believing the threesome rumor. 80, yeah. only asks if I want to live together when we're fighting, which is, what a great way to plead your case. Yeah, we're having a giant argument. We should move in together. That'll yeah. work out. 81, told me I'm going to have homegirls jump you one time in a fight. Oh Who's the homegirl? So your mean. mom? I don't... I would... Tina up. <laughs> Shut up. Tina, get the brass knuckles. <laughs> Gonna go knock some straight girl out. <laughs> Um, no, he did tell me he was going to get me jumped once, and I literally started crying because I was so mean. Because <laughs> he knows I feel about getting jumped. Like, literally. <sighs> God, this list is forever. It's embarrassing what I let myself do. 136. Through. Gets grossed out by my period. <laughs> he does. He would never fuck me on my period, and that's, like, an <laughs> issue for me because I love having sex. Well, now you're going to really get fucked on your period. I so know. You're going to get everything you want and more. I know. Let's answer some more questions. This question is, is Sam gay? Yeah. What can I do to best hide my anxiety disorder that is literally ruining my life? I'm too poor to seek out medication. How are you coping with your BPD? Every day's a war, honestly, in my mind. So We've all got two wolves inside of us, our BPD. And our anxiety. Honestly, what really helps me is reminding yourself that you are not your anxiety and that your anxiety is just one part of you. It doesn't make up the whole sum of you. So whenever you are feeling anxious, the therapy I've been in is learning how to talk to that anxious part and just letting them know like, hey, girl, I see you. OK, and I totally get where you're coming from because I have anxiety all the fucking time. So every time I'm anxious at this point, I literally just have to go back into my brain, find what's making me anxious and then just let her know. Hey, girl, she, you're calling again. I <laughs> got it. You really want me to dissociate right now? Or you really want me to stop breathing? Or you just think the world's fucking ending? But I promise you, we've been through so much worse. You're going to be fine. Just remind yourself to breathe, and I'm going to take care of you, okay? Yeah, in terms of your BPD, just trying <laughs> to stay as absolutely present as you can. Honestly, girl, look it up on fucking YouTube. Before I ever was in therapy, I would just type shit into YouTube, and there's a lot of online therapists that give lots of advice. And I know you said you're too poor for medication, but if you could try to find a therapist, that's been the most helpful thing for me. Also, I know it's stupid, but like sometimes just literally reminding yourself that your feet are touching the floor and counting in your head, that kind of helps too. Whenever you catch yourself just feeling a little bit. Counting helps me fall asleep. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and now what you've all been waiting for, we are going to be going into the Vegas trip where we went to go see Taylor. Taylor, shit. <laughs> who cried? Who fought? Who got drunk the most who needed miss cook to check your behavior and who ruined the trip for y'all almost ruined the trip who cried sam and philomena did while taylor swift was performing <laughs> philomena cried the entire like concert it was so song. bad we would turn around but i was like, happy for her. like it was it's funny because she obviously wasn't sad she just loves taylor swift so much and i had no idea she was that big of a swifty right i would turn around every 10 seconds and she'd be like <laughs> yeah like sobbing i was like oh my god i love taylor i didn't realize you liked her this fucking much who fought so sam and i did get into an argument <laughs> um, as you guys could have guessed <laughs> um and then this kind of follows up with the next question who got the most drunk so when we got to vegas we ended up just going to our hotel's bar me and philomena got the most drunk like we were belligerent they ended up going up to the room at midnight me and her stayed out i think until like three or four <coughs> okay <laughs> Karen's having an asthma attack. Okay, I don't have asthma. So me and Philomena got really drunk, and obviously, if you guys watched the last episode, he's obnoxious about his sleep. Like, we'll get really angry. 
I would love to take the mic for a minute while you do that. Naturally, after driving to Vegas for a total of six and a half hours, because, because kept I kept missing the turns and the <laughs> so exits, so it kept adding more time. We ended up drive. in California at one point. We ended up at the Hoover <laughs> Dam. Um, yeah. It was such a nightmare. We finally land in the sunny <laughs> land of Las Vegas, Nevada, which I wish people told me felt like if everything around you got nuclear bombed and then the city is the only thing that survived <laughs> literally it's in the middle of fucking nowhere <laughs> thanks guys for the heads up by the time i got there i was like this place is low-key triggering like i thought phoenix was full of fucking desert and sand and then you get there and you're like ew i'm literally in the plot of holes this is a nightmare so we get yeah. to the strip i'm so excited to go out this night i mean but i will say easier for you to want to drink until 3 a.m. because passenger princess gets to take 50 <laughs> naps on the way there. Someone had to stay awake the whole car ride. So I'm an OG certified passenger princess. We get to the casino and our first goal is just to head to the bar, get a couple of drinks, and I got a couple of Modellos in my system and then I wanted to go gamble. It was my first time in Vegas. Sue me, I wanted to play some roulette and I won 25 bucks. And by the time all was said and done, it was like closer to 1230. And honestly, I was like, we have Taylor Swift in the morning, like not in the morning, but I didn't want to be hungover because when I get fucking hungover, bitch, I get hungover for two days straight. So I knew I was not going to feel my best if I was super drunk the night before. So I just wanted to go up to the hotel room with my friend Nora and me and Nora are upstairs. We're trying to go to bed at a decent time and Philomena and Karina and Mackenzie, <laughs> The three slut <laughs> musketeers. Yeah, no. Slut we are slutty. <laughs> they, We're definitely like slutty and alcoholics. Like it's not a good mix at all. They barge into the room <laughs> and they're all flopping on the bed. They brought strangers into the hotel room. <laughs> not it was filming his friend. Okay? I, I don't care. Okay. They were You're still make it sound like I cheated. I, you did it, oh, projecting. <laughs> no one said you cheated. I did it. I, I believe you. We know. They want us to go out I really bad, it. but I'm just like honestly trying to budget my money better because I did have a little bit of my tax refund at this point, but I was like, I don't want to spend all my money at once, especially as our first night there, you know? So they really want to go out desperately, and I'm just like, please don't. So they're like, <laughs> okay, well, we back down to the bar we're going to drink my... And then Karina well, puts on her moo moo and sh they leave. And no, but I also was on the bed and at one point was on the ground. Like, I don't even know how I fell off of the bed. What do you mean? You don't know. You have no equilibrium when you're drunk. <laughs> your <laughs> gravity does not exist in I your know. body. It's like disgusting. So she puts on her pink moo moo. They leave the room <laughs> and Nora and I are like, Kenzie stayed behind too. So it's Kenzie, Nora and I. And I was like, they're going to come back in and they're going to wake me up. And. <laughs> As we fucking know, this last trip, I'm not sacrificing an hour of my sleep. Now, just one 20 minutes shaved off of my eight hours is going to put me in a terrible mood the next day. And I yeah. was wanting to be in my best mood and behavior possible for Taylor. So I was like, give it, give it to me. So she gave me Seroquel. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Seroquel is a powerful fucking <laughs> antipsychotic, <coughs> but also a sedative. And I used to take Seroquel back in high school and I would get mad at my friends and be like, I'm not hanging out anymore tonight. And I take a Seroquel and go to bed at like 12 PM and sleep for 12 hours. Seroquel's the shit. Okay. If you really need, if you're in a, if you're in a bind and you need to fall asleep fast, take a Seroquel. With that being said though, Kenzie was also like, you want one of my Xanax? And I was like, I'm literally a drug addict. No, I don't want your fucking bar. Okay. I didn't know she had Xanax. Of course she, it's oh, a 0.25. It. I would have taken one. Sorry, I didn't know your anxiety was bad. You <laughs> literally, quite literally, don't have anxiety. Like, you function on a level of no fear. I know you're afraid of trafficking, but for some reason, you don't know how to go out and have a good time. Yeah. I other was thinking about consequences. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, no, I'm going to go to bed. I took the Seroquel. This Seroquel did not fucking work, okay? It not only made me feel like I was swimming in water and I felt like my limbs were tied together with a rope, I was basically laying in, like, sleep paralysis for two hours. So it's like 3 a.m. at this point. They stumble back into the room. They're being loud as fuck. And I, it's like the weirdest experience when you're on the Seroquel because it's like you, you want to go to bed so bad, but I couldn't do it. I just couldn't fall asleep. So when they came in, my eyes were bloodshot fucking red. 
So I hear them. They, they're in the fucking the living space, and then they stumble their way into the bathroom. We're smoking a cigarette too. Like we're being ridiculous. So I go into the bathroom, and I'm like, "Please, you guys!" And I'm like, "Sure, I'm naked, trying to take a pee." Because I'm trying to also calm myself down, and I'm like, "Please, you guys, just go to bed. Like, why are you doing this?" They're just refusing <laughs> to be sane or normal. They're big. Me and Philomena really bonded that night. You guys really pop. put your two chromosomes together and <laughs> fucked shit up. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, did. So we basically leave because Sam's like upset, whatever. So we're out. Oh, whatever. We're out in the oh, she also, want, she also had to mention to me too in my fucking sleep paralysis as I'm like sleepwalking telling her to be quiet. <laughs> what did I say? Um, the only person I care about waking up here is Nora. <laughs> and so yeah. I was like, thanks, went, Karina. Oh, yeah, that's really fucking nice, Karina. And then I was like, oh, damn it, I shouldn't have said that. And so me and Philomena end up just going right outside of the hotel room door, and Philomena starts doing bridges, and we, think it's like, we thought it was the funniest thing ever when we were drinking. And we're, like, chain-smoking a bunch of cigarettes. Like, we smoked an entire pack that night. We we're being ridiculous. One of the people across the room, like across the hallway from us, literally opened the door and went, can you guys stop? Oh, oh <laughs> wow. Thanks for revealing that yeah. after we've left. And so then we end up going near the elevators and Philomena kept lifting up her dress and then still doing the be- the bridges. And then a guy came out of the fucking elevator. And then I think that's when we called it at night because we're like, we're, we don't have any privacy. I don't even know. Why were you stupid. up in the hallway? Why didn't you go back down to the casino? Because I think because her friends already left and i was like i don't want to go back down there i'm already like fucked up and when i was down there before i went up this guy was like i was a drummer for all these bands blah 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 and then his girlfriend or his wife or whatever was literally trying to fuck me she literally looked at me and she's like have you ever been with a woman before and i was like no and she was like are you bi and i was like i'm curious and then she was like (laughs) she was like I'll take real good care of you. You've never been with an older woman. And I was like, and then they ended up taking a picture of me, which was fucking shady. And then we went up to the room. That's why I didn't want to go back down. So they get back into the hotel room. They finally go to bed. Okay. And I'm like, oh, thank God. And I finally fell asleep. I think genuinely the Seroquel, what overpowered my ability to fall asleep was knowing in my heart, they could still come in here at any second and ruin this. (laughs) They're still going to wake me up. So when you guys finally tucked yourselves in and everyone called in a night, I was like, okay, I can fall asleep. So I fall asleep and then the birds are chirping, the sun's out. Okay, so <laughs> by this, the fucking so world's awake. By this point, it's 9.40, about to be 10 a.m. So I, keep in mind, they didn't get in until probably 3.30, I'd say, when they all, when I probably fell asleep, it was probably finally around 3.30. So I had probably gotten maybe five and a half hours of sleep at this point. Yeah. Still fighting off the Seracle hangover. So and I just I was the first one awake because I had a call out of work and I'm just like once I'm up and I like actually get up and start walking around I can't go back to sleep so I call my work and then I'm just in bed for an hour and a half you you mean calling your work after your alarm went off 25 times (laughs) my alarm is so annoying I feel bad which it wasn't me who told you to turn it off right I think it was that was the next day Nora wait can you turn that off (laughs) Basically, I'm like awake waiting for everyone else to wake up. And then <sighs> my bestie for the night, Philomena, of course, is the second person to wake up. And I'm like, oh, my God, thank God. It's like treble. It's double treble. She wakes up and I just whisper, last night was so fun. Sam immediately wakes up because <laughs> <laughs> the way the beds are, I was facing the- like it's like this, literally. But like we're just laying, looking at each other. His eyes just get like pop open and he goes, what like in a decent voice goes what time is it and (laughs) philomena goes 10 and sam goes then why the fuck are you awake (laughs) and then he stands up and goes pee and i just as soon as he went in the bathroom i started laughing but i had to hide my head in the covers because i was like if he hears me laughing i'm scared he's gonna throw something at me (laughs) so me and philomena are both just like and then kenzie's standing there like oh my god and then sam goes to the bathroom he immediately he i don't know if you said anything else but then you just lay back down nora's awake by that point she's also scared so we all were like should we go to the hot tub like should we leave oh i was so happy when you guys said that i was like thank you all of you file out 
One at a time. Yeah, but then when we go, when we go downstairs to the hot tub, they're fucking filling it up. The hot tub wasn't even, you couldn't even use it. And then there was a Canadian woman there being a fucking Karen about it, cussing. And she was like, I pay a resort fee and the fucking hot tub isn't working. And it's like, okay, just give it like an hour. You went and got breakfast. I think I got a, yeah, I got breakfast and then I got, I got a drink. Oh yeah. I, the, when vacation, I woke up. I have to drink every day. I'm sorry. I have to drink. <laughs> I do. I have to. I have to every day. As soon as I wake up. As I'm soon as a they drink. wake up, I'm getting a drink. Yeah. Yeah. I treat it like it's Rocky Point. Anywhere I go, I like need a drink. It's my time to let loose. Well, they finally left to go get breakfast, alcoholic, and mm-hmm. um, I was able to get some sleep. So I finished my rest and I woke up at a solid like 1 p.m. Okay, before that, I was already annoyed with Sam the first night we got there because I try on this dress and Sam just looked <laughs> as I'm as you guys, I am on Instagram live. So he humiliates me and he goes, are you going to wear that? I don't like that dress. And I was like... <laughs> In my head, I'm like, are you the one fucking me? Like, why does this, why are you telling me this? Like, why are you saying you don't like what I'm wearing? And then he's are just like. Are you fucking me? Because you're the one who fucking asked me, do you like my dress? And then when I told <laughs> you the honest truth, you got your feelings hurt. Yeah. And so I immediately, I go mute, of course. I Every time I get triggered like that, I'm just not talking. Like, I don't want to talk. So I just am changing my outfit the entire time, avoiding making eye contact with <laughs> <laughs> as we're all sharing a fucking room together look in my defense the dress was like sensory overload like, it I, was it, it was, was and honestly, i'm pissed off because the dress was over a hundred dollars i bought it like a year ago as you were getting ready I've i just kept it. i kept glancing out at theme i had like oh, she could just do so much better or like it's not no. it he's like that with everyone like he, i hope you know nora literally said to me later on she went i'm glad you said something. i didn't like the dress <laughs> stop did she <laughs> She goes, I wasn't going to say anything. But I finished those. She takes off this pink ruffly dress, the pink flamingo dress, and she puts on a very stunning outfit. And we had a good time. It was time. a cunt outfit, I will say. Yeah, and you got so many good pictures. It was the thing is we were all in like shades of black and then she steps out in this bright pink ruffly like cruise ship dress. And it was like, oh, I don't know if that's the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the vibe and then when i was over at her house two days later because i felt bad okay i knew when she took it off i was like there was two parts of me one part of me was like oh then the other part of me was like oh thank god i yeah. got it bullying works and then it does it does wonder we get back to her house after the trip and she tosses it immediately to her deep off i was like oh you're gonna sell it <laughs> yeah. i am selling the dress so. i do know how to you know smooth things over though and i was like I know if I get drunk enough, I'll put it on. Yeah, and then he did put on the dress. <laughs> and then it, I all beef was just is squashed. Yes, um, the pink dress tobacco. Um, yes, but what was I saying before that? What did I just bring? Oh, oh, Gail. So the next day we have the Taylor Swift concert, okay? So Gail, if you, which I didn't know who the fuck she was. She's that singer from Sing the Song. A, B, C, D, E, F, U. My poop stings and I'm really stupid and I don't know how to sing. And I'm really off I key. hate that song. I just hate TikTok. Like it's, it's so just like TikTok, TikTok BB Rexa court. But I love BB. I love BB. I know. I was <laughs> like, we love BB Rexa. What are I you know. talking about? But it's just um, one of those like generic <laughs> ass pop songs. Yes, that's and it's also inducing. she was the epitome of TikTok culture. She was wearing right. a corset from Urban Outfitters, camo pants like the Four Loco pants from 2018, like, with like Vans. I think it was just Clashing. pissing me off so bad because it's like you're literally opening for taylor swift why do you not have a fucking stylist right or why do you not have a different stylist how pissed is it too that like i'm I sorry felt- i know that's mean but it's like her outfit was disgusting like i hated her outfit i just hate when people dress so i hate when people dress bad i like as a, we're all making fun of the pink dress i was gonna wear but <laughs> <laughs> I would choose the pink dress over what Gail was fucking wearing on stage. I it just, really pissed me off. And me and Nora were talking shit about her the entire 20 minutes she was on stage. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, the people behind us can totally hear what we're saying. And they think we're horrible people. Because every time she'd do something, we'd start laughing and be like, God. <laughs> like she would do something stupid like on stage. Like she was in like her rock era, like with her guitar. And we were like, we hate her. Like, she's just, <laughs> I just, it's because of the song, honestly. It's fucked up that, like, other shows got fucking Paramore or even Haim, and then we got Gail. Like, she doesn't even have a discography of more than, like, three songs. Like, what yeah. the fuck is Gail gonna sing? 
I missed Kale because I was buying my sweater and I, <laughs> I didn't get line. merch from this concert. I usually always get merch, but I'm honestly not. I know. I was surprised you didn't ask to get something. I, I'm i stupid. I should have done that. But yeah, we would have gotten you. I, I asked know. Philomena too when we were leaving the line. I was like, did they want something? Like, how much did you get? No, I honestly, I'm not as big of a fan of Taylor Swift as you guys are. I just wanted all. something to remember it by. And yeah, I was freezing my like ass off. Yeah. Sam asked for my coat and I didn't give it to him. But I was going inside because I didn't. I felt just felt bigger that day. And oh Sam literally God. was like, "Can I wear your coat?" And I just looked at him and then I, I don't even think I answered. And like, now I, you didn't. No, so I just walked away and went inside. You deserve like, not... all of the criticism for your pink dress because you're a mean girl. Literally, she had a high school bully in her concert. <laughs> See, they're bullying Gail. <laughs> what did Gail do to you? <laughs> I feel like the Swifties she dressed probably like bad. That's what she did to me. I'll say this though, Swifties, you kind of kind of mean. Like Swifties are mean. I was sitting there. How to be a part Taylor's, of the base? Taylor. <laughs> Hat caps off to you. Taylor's like giving a fucking speech at one point, and I turn to my friends and I'm like, "Did she just say lyrics? Like, is she about to sing a song?" Because it's you know Taylor's really into Easter eggs, and the fucking girls behind me are like. <coughs> Of course, she's singing lyrics. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then also, there was this, this group this of four bear. year olds. No, he this was a bear. Hold bear. on, hold on, hold he on. He was a bear. There's a group of 40 year olds. Like, it's three gay guys with like beards and like these glitter, glittery. I honestly, they would have loved me. They had these myself. giant sequin top tops. Those are, those are the crowds beard. that fucking love me. Yeah. And so. One of the guys came up, me and Nora <laughs> saw them, and she was like, oh, it was a guy, the guy that Sam's referring to, the bear, which a bear, how do you describe a bear? He's big with a beard. He's hairy That's like a and bald. thing you call like big gay guys in the gay community. They're bears. Yes. And they're hairy. Um, so he came up in like this, this bodysuit with like blue sequins and like glittery makeup. And he had these lit up a Victoria's secret model angel wings. Like they weren't just cheap wings. Like they were like the Victoria's secret fashion show. Me and Nora were laughing. So we're like, that's literally going to be our friend group in like 15 <laughs> years. Like that's literally going to be us. Um, I guess during the concert, Philomena said that the guy with the big wings <laughs> gave Sam a really dirty look. What Sam was singing and dancing. <laughs> Because we cannot find any more concerts. <laughs> My bad. Meanwhile, we're sitting in the farthest, toppest row yeah. of the whole fucking stadium. I, Nora's phone thought she was in an airplane because of how high up we were. But the show was incredible, despite the yeah. few little Swifties with some attitude problems. <laughs> and I cried twice. And yeah, Philomena cried the whole time. Fun. And Karina was sitting for most of it, not knowing the lyrics. And I felt bad. Well, like, I was really high. And then I hit my wax pen. At the concert, and I heard someone behind me go, "Who smokes an e-cigarette at a Taylor Swift concert?" <laughs> so I was just like, "I can't do anything in here. Fuck! Like you're getting attacked for singing and just asking Literally. a question, and then I can't fucking hit my fucking pen." But the show, all in all, was incredible. If you guys have not gotten a chance to go see her live, she's I highly amazing recommend live. it. Yeah, it was amazing. She's no Lady Gaga to me, but she's still really good. Yeah, they're pretty neck and neck for me right now. They are. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like that show was incredible. And yeah, with that being said, um, do we have any other questions? This one says, why does Karina look depressed in every episode? That was really hurtful. <laughs> I don't know why you would say that. Um I've been quite happier the past two weeks. I was working at Starbucks. It was great. Last week, my trainer, we went on a 10-minute break, and she went out to her car and literally cried for an hour. <laughs> so my 10-minute break turned into an hour-long lunch, and I love her. She told me all the gossip in the store, and I'm obsessed and can't wait to keep going back because if there's one thing about me... We love gossip. Chaos ensues. What would you say to a 16-year-old Karina if she asked how a 24-year-old Karina is doing now? What would you say to your six year old self right now about where you're at in your life? <laughs> well, we're still at home. <laughs> <laughs> still still no got car. a drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> still at home, still no car, and you are a raging alcoholic. But you do end up with the person you're in love with. So <laughs> you will be very happy in the future. And you do your makeup quite better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So. And this person says, my boyfriend of six years would like me okay. to do butt stuff with him, but I'm afraid. I don't want him to like it so much he realizes he's gay. 
Do you think it's gay for a guy to get his ass eaten out? He also wants me to use one of my vibrators on. Wow. I should probably mention that he also does graffiti. Oh, <laughs> and then it got shot. Um, <laughs> um, oh, your head was in my penis. <laughs> I, don't why, I don't know why you would send that to me. Um, I can't relate, but I don't think getting your ass ate is gay. No, if a girl's doing it. Um, the <laughs> vibrator is a little questionable, but hey, whatever floats your boat and gets your noggin knotted. <laughs> whatever gets you your, your rub and tug, I guess. Have you ever done that? <laughs> <laughs> I want to fucking strangle you. <laughs> no comment. Um, <laughs> You've never used a vibrator on your boyfriend. Uh, okay, Pinocchio. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, whatever. <laughs> this one said, do you think it's too soon to move in with a guy you're dating after only knowing him for a couple of months? Yes, I don't fucking do that. Yeah, we both did that, and it's not no, smart. No, I moved in with my most recent ex i think like four months into our relationship or something it only lasted a month and it ended really bad so i wouldn't do that yeah i'm so against living with someone you're dating until you've been with them for like at probably least two over, years yeah i would say two years yeah a year and a half two years i would not move in with them after a few months nope. um, you do not fucking know someone unless you live with them no literally uh -huh. ask my ex-boyfriend he'd tell you horror stories <laughs> about me living with him um, this yeah. person says, should I break out with my boyfriend? He likes to lick my feet for four months and I hate having my toes tickled. <laughs> Do you like getting your toes sucked? Just putting that out there for anyone who might want to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care for it, to be honest. Yeah, you've never stuck your, your size nine <laughs> feet? <laughs> I have got my toes sucked, but I don't really care for it. You know who did suck my toes? The coworker. So I oh my <laughs> God. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Robert. <laughs> so Ew, <laughs> shut up. Oh, Mr. J. <laughs> Dude, I hate that. <laughs> He earned it now. I don't want to be stuck in this room anymore. Ugh, fine, we're ending it. And I, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't get my toes sucked. So with that being said, this is the 15th official episode of the Anxious Podcast. You can find us on Apple or Spotify. Like this video, comment, subscribe, leave a five star review. Oh and God. yeah, if you guys have any more advice or questions you want to submit next week, go for it. And with that being said, my name is Murphy. And I'm Karen. Oh, we didn't even talk about the fact that Phil and me had to pull over on the side of the road and take a dump in the forest as <laughs> we were on our road trip. Yeah, and it was the greenest, <laughs> most feral shit I've ever seen in my life. It looked like something that came out of a newborn's diaper. And she brought it <laughs> I forgot she did that too. <laughs> that was so gross. And I literally told her, I was like... Dude, I don't want to see the picture because you kept being like, Karina, <laughs> let me show you the picture. And I was like, Filmina, I have a sensitive stomach. I don't want to see the picture. And she she knows how to fucking speak my language. So she literally went, look at this picture of this dress I just bought. It's a picture of her shit. And I was like, no. <sighs> Yeah, when she took that dump douche, I remember she like ran off into the jungle like she was Sasquatch <laughs> and she just disappeared for like seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that being said, my name's Burpee. And I'm Karen. And we are out of here. Bye. Bye, you guys. Bye, Keefies. Love you. Love. <laughs>